Hey guys, this is Ms. Holin. Uh, this is a lecture on ATP for all of you to go back and refer to. So here we go. First things first, I would like to go over some of the root words that we're going to be focusing on within this unit. Monoditri actually means one, two, three. Photochemo is light to chemical. Syn is together. So when I say chemosynthesis, it means to put chemicals together versus photosynthesis means to put light together. Auto means self or automatic. A or an in Latin means not or without, so aerobic is without air. Chloro and fill means a green leaf, so therefore chlorophyll is what causes the green in the leaf, and that in turn is going to help us produce that photosynthesis. Chromo means color, similar to a chromoplast. Hetero means different. Meso middle, so a mesophyll is the middle of the leaf. Hydro means water, and then aero means air. So just please make sure to write these down and um, refer to these because they might help you with studying. Now here's our big guy. He is ATP, so this is your structure of adenosine triphosphate. Now I want to go over a few things here. Your nitrogen base here is actually known as adenine. You also have your 5-carbon sugar, which is known as ribose. And then you have your 3-phosphoric acids, which when we put them together is your phosphate group. So when we talk about adenosine triphosphate, adenosine is actually the combination of the adenine and ribose. So the nitrogen and sugar get put together, and his name becomes adenosine. Triphosphate, just like it sounds, is our three phosphates groups. Now the most important thing about ATP is that it is the chemical used by most of the cell processes. And so this actually dates back to what's known as LUCA. LUCA is our last universal common ancestor. And LUCA is made up of chopin. And so ATP is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphate, and then our nitrogen. Chopin, in turn, forms nucleic acids. And so a couple classic examples of nucleic acids we've seen before is DNA and RNA. Now if you take Chopin and rip him out and make Cho, we have is our glucose. We can also use Chon to make some proteins. We can make the ATP, rip him apart, make ribosomes, cell membrane. So moral of the story is everything living is actually made from ATP. So how does ATP actually work and what are the three different forms? ATP is known as tri, so he actually has a 3-phosphate, and this is our highest form of energy. When we break him apart into di, that's when the actual energy is released, and now we have what's known as adenosine diphosphate, only two. If we want, we can take this di and rip him off, and so we now have what's known as one phosphate left, which is adenosine monophosphate, which is the lowest type of energy that we have. Now, ATP is also referred to as a rechargeable battery. So let's talk about how it's actually rechargeable. ATP goes through this very simple cycle. So in order to actually create energy, we're going to rip off this phosphate, and it only lasts for a few seconds. And that ripping off or breaking the chemical bonds creates that energy. And that in turn creates what's known as ADP. So we only have two left. In order to put the phosphate back on to this ADP to remake our fully charged battery here, we're going to need some type of food or respiration. Now keep in mind, it's not the food that carries the ATP, it's the breaking down of the food is how we get the ATP. So the first source that we've talked about in class is known as your carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are your polymer, so there's many, and then your monomer that makes up your carbohydrates are your glucose. So one glucose will actually give us 36 ATP, which is a lot, but it's not tremendous. Now your lipids, on the other hand, when you eat your fats, your oils, your waxes, will actually yield 146 ATP. Now, this is actually stored about 80% of the energy in your body. However, in order to use it, we're going to run, per se, or work out for about 30 minutes, and we burn through our carbs and glucose. Once that 30 minutes hits, and you get your second wind, that is when your lipids start to burn. And so that second wind, that super source of energy, this is why. Because you're getting literally 146 molecules for one molecule of fat, which is your glycerol and three fatty acids. Now, proteins, on the other hand, would rather not 
actually break apart into ATP because your whole body is made of protein. We need to rebuild proteins into other proteins. So we only have about 12 proteins in our body naturally, and so the rest of them we need to actually get from food. And so one food source that many of us eat are steak. So a cow, kill the cow, get the piece of steak, you eat the steak, you break it up into its amino acids, we're going to recycle those amino acids, rework them almost like a puzzle, and rebuild another type of protein in your body. And this would be your heart. So the literal form of we are what you eat is literally exactly that. Your, your heart, if you go backward, is actually made up of the cow amino acid. So kind of cool. Three things that ATP is actually made up of for, made, or used for, if you guys can see that, is the sodium potassium pump, which helps keep your neurons working. So these little starfish-like guys send signals between each other, and that in turn allows the ATP, or we need ATP, in order for the brain, the nervous system, um, pretty much your entire body to work. Now, ATP is also used for muscle contraction, so that myosin actin, where you can flex your bicep and it kind of curls, and then... By flexing it, you need to release your tricep, and so that in turn is where we use ATP to actually work our muscles. Also, ATP is used to actually build proteins, so building your heart, building your brain, building anything your body needs. Now, how do we actually use ATP? So we talked about this in class before. The process of actually getting energy from ATP is known as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is water, so we're going to throw water at ATP, and that in turn rips them apart. And so this is actually the process of phosphorylation. So we're going from a fully charged battery, ATP, to now a partially charged battery. By physically breaking the chemical bonds, by releasing this phosphate, that is where we get about seven kilocalories per mole of energy. Now, because ATP is known as a recyclable battery, we need to put them back together. So dehydration synthesis is where we're going to dehydrate the molecule. So I'm going to dehydrate, which means I'm going to rip water away from ADP. And that in turn allows the phosphate to actually connect back together. And we're back at our fully charged battery. Now, plants don't walk around eating hamburgers and french fries and drinking shakes. Instead, they get their energy or their ATP from photosynthesis. So photo means light, synthesis means to put together. So we're going to take light, put it together to create the sugar, that in turn will lead us into the energy plants need in order to survive. Now, if you're in the deep sea vents, on the other hand, 3,000 feet down, there is no light. So instead, we're going to take the chemicals, the sulfur, from the magma, the center of the earth, and we're going to put that together to create the sugar. So regardless of whether or not you eat food, you get food from light or we can get the food from um, chemicals you need one glucose to eventually produce 36 ATP and that in turn will actually create your energy that your body needs in order to actually survive thank you for listening to Miss Holland's lecture on ATP I hopefully hopefully you find that helpful and if you have any questions please see me in class the next time thank you